Welcome to this revision session of the paper that we wrote uh, in physics. So we want to give a revision on what you were supposed or what you expected to have done in the in the tests. On Fig 3.1, draw a graph of extension against the load for a spring which obeys Hooke's law. Okay, what is Hooke's law? Probably that's the first thing that we might need to understand. We know that Hooke's law states that force is directly proportional to extension, which is x. Therefore, f, if we introduce the constant of proportionality, f is equals to kx. That's Hooke's law. In other words, Hooke's law says that if you stretch a material, the more force you are applying, the more that object or that material is also extending. Okay? So, we did the force extension graph. We say that the force extension graph looked like this, whereby we had force. Guys, remember one thing that is very important. Force is equal to load, right? It's the same thing. When they say load, they are talking about the force again, okay? Then this one, this was extension. This discuss this as extend, extension. Now, we had to draw this graph, and we said using a ruler, a straight line, that goes there right then we reach a certain point okay we reach a certain point whereby okay we draw a straight line then we reach a certain point then the graph will look like something like this okay and we say that from O, let's go this point a we have right it's called the uh, elastic limit point. It's called the ela elastic limit. In the sense that we can stretch a material to point A. But if we continue to stretch above A, right, we can apply more force, but it cannot stretch anymore. It eventually breaks. Okay. Now, in this case now, we have... They have flipped the graph. Can you see that the force was in this direction? This was uh, was on the x y axis, and extension was on the x axis. They have flipped now. The force or the load is now on the x axis, and the extension is now on the y axis. So what it looks like using your ruler again, you draw a straight line up to the okay. Then in this case now it will go something like this. Okay, what is happening here is it is showing that at this point, if you release the force, it can go back to its original original position. It cannot extend anymore. Okay. So this is the graph that you expected to, to draw. Okay. State the word used to describe the energy stored in the spring that has been stretched or compressed. So the energy that is stored in the spring that has been uh, stored or compressed, we call it the elastic potential energy. It is called the elastic potential energy. Okay. It is the energy that is stored in a stretched material. Increment shows a model train traveling at the speed of V approaching a buffer. There's the buffer. And the buffer is used to stop the uh, trains. Okay. The train of mass 2.5 kg is stopped by compressing a spring in the buffer. Ex After the train is stopped, the energy stored in the spring is 0 0.4, 0 0.4 joules. So, after the train has stopped, which means this train, before it stopped, it had a certain energy. And what was that energy? It had kinetic energy. That was the... Then, all this kinetic energy, remember the conservation law, what does it say? Energy cannot be created, it cannot be destroyed, but can only be transformed from one form to another. So, the kinetic energy was transformed to energy, which is found in the, in the, in the spring. Okay. So... We are considering that there was conservation of energy. All the kinetic energy that was uh, trained was converted to the stored energy 
in the spring or in the in the buffer okay so it's very simple to find the initial speed we are simply saying that the kinetic energy was fully converted to the elastic potential energy okay to the potential energy so what is this kinetic energy this kinetic energy which is ek is equivalent to half m v squared and what are we looking for we want to find the initial speed which is v of the train and how do we make v how do we find v we make v subject of the formula but remember we are given this energy as stored energy so there's no problem because this stored energy is 0 0.48 and all of the energy came from this kinetic energy so it still use the same energy so we are saying 0 0.48 is equals to half and the mass is said to be 2.5 kg multiplied by v squared okay if i simplify this i'm having here v squared is equals to 9.6 divided by 2.5 okay what happens uh what v so i have to square both sides i have to square both sides and you know this would happen then becomes v is equivalent to 0 0.6 this is equals to 0 0.619 uh, meters per second meters per second 19 meters per per second okay i hope this is straightforward go to the next question Feed 2.1 shows a conveyor belt transporting a package of a, to a raised platform. The conveyor belt is driven by a motor. The mass of the package is 36 kg. Calculate the increase in gravitational potential energy of the package when it is raised through a vertical through a vertical height. Okay. So what do we do there? Remember, we are talking about the gravitational potential energy. Gravitational potential energy, which is GPE, we say GPE is equals to gravitational potential energy, which is GP, is equals to MGH, mass times gravity times the height over which the GPE is acting on. Okay, so we're told that the calculate the gravitational potential energy. Okay, so we have height 2.4 meters. And the mass 36 kg, the gravity 9.81, or we'll use 10 in this case, right, to simplify our problem. Okay, so that's 36 kg multiplied by 10 meters per second, second over Newton kg multiplied by height, which is 2,4 meters. So the answer is 864 joules. Remember, energy is measured in, in joules. So that was the increase in gravitational potential energy that was the increase in gravitational potential energy let's move to the next question package is read is through a vertical height of 2.4 meters in 4.4 seconds now we have time calculate the power needed to raise the package we know that power how do we calculate power power is equals to work done over time power is equals to work done over time so what is the work done the work done, remember we said that the work done is equivalent to energy. There's no problem. And the energy, that is the one that we got there, 864 joules. That was the energy, in which that is the work that is supposed to be done over that height of 2.4 meters. So you were supposed to take 864 as the work done, because that's energy as well. So it's 2864, sorry, divided by time, which is said to be 4.4 seconds. Therefore, the power was equal to 190 6.4 remember the units for power is watts power is measured in watts watts okay or if you want to have derived quantities it's joules per second remember this one is joules this one is second so it will be joules per second or joules over second okay but see the electrical power supplied to the motor is much greater than the answer to be explain how the principle of conservation of energy applies to this to this system okay so the electrical power uh, supplied to the motor is much greater 
done this, right? This is what we have calculated or what is the actual, but uh, the electrical power supply in the motor is much greater than the power in B. Then what does that mean? It means that some of the energy has been, actually the energy has not been conserved, right? The energy has been converted to other forms of energy. So in other words, you're saying energy has not been conserved. Conserved. Rather, it was converted to other forms of energy. Okay. Now let's go to at D. Assume that the power available to raise the package is constant. A power a package of mass greater than 36 grade G is raised through the same height. Suggest and explain the effect of increase in mass of the operation of the conveyor belt. So we're now saying that the mass has increased, right? So definitely what we expect, if the mass is has increased, what do you expect on the conveyor belt, right? Speed is going to reduce. Speed is going to reduce. due to the increase in mass. In mass. Since now, there is a lot of work that has to be done. Because now, they, they remember, we know that energy or work done is equal to MGH, the potential gravitational potential energy, right? Is the GPE is equal to MGH. So if M increased, it means now we have to, we are now doing more work. Hence, we are not changing the power that we are supplying, meaning to say what is going to happen, speed is going to reduce, speed of the conveyor belt is going to reduce. Another thing, there's going to be more heat is going to be generated. More heat will be generated. Right? Due to force of friction. Due to force of friction. Okay. All right. Let's go to the next one. Athlete of mass 64 kg is bouncing up and down a trampoline. At one moment, the athlete is stationary on the stretched surface of the trampoline. Fig 3.1 shows an athlete at this at this moment. State the form of energy stored due to the stretching of the surface of the trampoline. That's the same thing with the previous question that we had there. So whenever they are talking about stretching, that is elastic potential energy. Okay. Elastic potential energy. Okay. Now, stretch the surface of the trampoline begins to contract. The athlete is pushed vertically upwards and, the, and she accelerates. At time t, when her body, when her upward velocity is 6 meters per second, she loses contact with the surface. Calculate the kinetic energy at that particular time. Okay? So this one is simple. Again, we know that kinetic energy... So EK is equals to half MV squared. Okay. So we want the kinetic at that particular time. The mass is not affected. It remains constant. So the mass was said to be 64 kgs. Don't forget that. Then the velocity was said to be 6 meters per second. But remember, it's squared here. It's V squared. Okay. So you're supposed to punch this in the calculator. Then you would get uh, 1,152 joules as the kinetic energy. Okay, then calculate the maximum possible distance she can travel upward after time t. So what this means when they're saying maximum possible, remember we said that uh, kinetic energy can be converted to 
gravitational potential energy so if energy if no energy is lost we say that the energy has been conserved okay so here the maximum possible distance she can travel can be obtained only when there is no energy loss that has taken place for example there is no other transformations uh, that uh, took the energy the energy all of it was trans uh, was transferred from kinetic energy to potential energy or from potential energy to kinetic energy so the value of the energy will not change so here you see that the kinetic energy is in terms of value is the same as the gravitational potential energy therefore we say that potential energy gravitational potential energy gpe is equals to m g h since gpe and kinetic energy is the same value you come with the same value and you say 1152 joules is equals to m g h but you know that uh the mass was said to be 64 g we are using 10 multiplied by the h remember they are looking for this h so you're supposed to make h subject of the formula therefore h is equals to 1152 divided by 64 times 10 divided by 640 therefore h here will be 1.8 meters okay 1.8 meters some of you are seeing answers of uh, 1000 meters even in your using your common sense that's not possible okay all right in practice she travels upward she travels upwards through a slightly smaller distance than the distance calculated suggests why this is so now in practice we are not talking about in real right there is no situation in real life or in real practice whereby we simply say energy is conserved that all the kinetic energy all of it is totally converted to the potential energy all of it is not possible some of the energy is lost right due to other is transferred to other uh energies okay here in this case remember if we throw a strong upward we, just, we agree that that there is a force that opposes this stone we are throwing and we call this force a resistance a resistance just like in horizontal movement if you have a body that is on a surface remember if you're pushing it that way you tend to encounter an opposite force that is opposing it that is called the friction right force of friction so when you throw in a uh, body upward into the opposite force that will be exerting on that particular object that is going upward is called the air resistance so this air resistance will take some of its energy that's why i'm saying that she is no longer going to jump to the to the calculated value because some of the energy has been lost so this is just why is it suggest why is it so is because uh, because of air resistance okay all right let's go to the next question again there's another question the trampoline spring are tested trampoline springs are tested an extension load graph is uh, plotted on one spring fig 3.2 in the in this graph okay you see this is the same question again uh it comes back there's an extension load graph they love extension force graph instead of force of a force extension graph they flipped the graph right so this is what you were supposed to draw in the first question there this is what they wanted right okay so state the point x this from this point up to point x okay it's called the elasticity point right elasticity just uh, above this point it will start to have the process of breaking right so this is the elasticity point where if you release the force that you're applying it will go back to its original position okay so it's called the elasticity elastic elasticity 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 point right or you can just say the elastic limit okay elastic elastic limit point okay next question let's go on to state the name of the law we if you check 
on the first question, the law was the right. We call this hooks law. We call this hooks law, where force is directly proportional to extension. And if you introduce the constant of proportionality, f is equals to kx. Okay, this remember represents the gradient. Don't forget that. So if you get the gradient of your particular graph, for example, here if you get the gradient. That gradient is the value of k that you can use there because the gradient is constant it's not changing okay now let's go to the next question and to the last one an electric train is initially addressed at a railway station the motor causes the constant force of 360,000 newtons to act on the train and the train begins to move state the form of energy gained by the train as it begins to move so we want the form of energy that it gains as it begins to move. So if anything starts to move, definitely it's gaining kinetic kinetic energy. Right? As it begins to move, it gains kinetic energy. The train travels a distance of 4 kilometers along a straight horizontal track. Calculate the work done on the train during this part of the journey. Okay? So we know that work done. Okay? We know that work done is equals to force times force times distance. We know that work done is equals to force times. Okay, I'll just write it. Work done is equals to force times distance. So what is the force? The force was said to be three hundred and sixty thousand newtons, right? Multiplied by the distance. The distance, most of you made a mistake there. It was said to be four kilometers, right? But remember, let's work with the SI units, what we are used for. So you're supposed to convert four kilometers to meters, right? So you would get 4,000 meters, right? So you're supposed to multiply by 4,000, okay? When you get there, you're supposed to get something like 144 times 10 to the power, 7 joules, okay? Let's move to the next question. Calculate the maximum possible speed. Again, this question is very calculate the maximum possible speed of the train at the end of the first four kilometers of the journey. Okay. So we are still converting the same energy that we had, right? Remember, energy and work done. We're talking about the same thing here. Okay. So we are saying the kinetic energy is equals to m sorry half m v squared this is the equation that will give us this velocity same thing so the maximum possible speed only we can get maximum possible speed if we have totally conserved all energy if there's no if some of the energy is not lost then we are saying that we have conserved the the energy meaning to say all the energy that was there has been converted to the kinetic energy therefore we are simply saying 144 times 10 to the power 7 is equals to half multiplied by the mass there is the mass 450,000 multiplied by the velocity squared remember you are supposed to make v subject of the formula you're supposed to make v subject of the formula and if you Decide to do this, I'm apply by two day, I cancel day, after applying by two day, therefore my V squared, uh, if I'm applied there, it's going to be 288 times 10 to the power 7. Uh, if I divide by this one, which comes 450,000. Okay, to find V, I have to square both sides so that this will cancel. Then I'll put this again, everything in the square root sign. Therefore, I'm getting V A being equal to 80, me, 80 meters per second. So my V is 80 meters per second. So you can see that this value in real life or in real practice is outrageous, right? There's no way we can talk about that speed. We train 80 meters per second. We're just saying one, just one second, one, two. So we're saying that train has already moved 80 meters. Just imagine 80 meters, right? So it's two. It's the maximum possible. 
Now, part three is saying, in practice, the speed of the train is much less than the value calculated. So we definitely expect a lesser speed, right? Suggest one reason why uh, this why this is the case. Definitely, some of the energy has been lost, right, or converted to other energies. So we can simply say energy. Let me just check one. Energy is lost as heat due to friction. Lost as heat due to friction. Okay, so a lot of things will happen. With, okay, can even think of uh, yes, energy is lost due to heat. There's also uh, things like sound energy. Some is lost as sound and etc and etc that means definitely it will affect our final velocity they have a well reduced velocity okay after traveling four kilometers the train reaches the, its maximum speed it continues at this constant speed on the next session of the track where the track follows a curve which is part of a circle state the direction of the resultant force on the train as it follows the curve the path Okay, guys, you know, we also discussed about this. Whenever you have a circle, right, and you have something that is orbiting around the, the circle, we always have the center that period, okay? So what happens is this. Let's say it's a car, it's a train, whatever is going right around the, the circle. It is a radius. Number one, we know that uh, there's always a force that is directed towards the center of the circle. That is the resultant force. Anything that is orbiting around the circle has got a resultant force that is directed towards the center of the circle. So the arrow there was supposed to be towards the center of the, of the circle. Don't confuse that with a string. If a string is in the circle, let's say you are playing a ball and you are, it's going round, round the circle, you have to know that, of course, in the string, there is this force that is going, we call this force the tensional force. It's called tension, force of tension. But the force that is directed towards the center is there, and that is the resultant, the resultant force of that particular uh, object. Usually called this the uh, centripetal force, the centripetal force. So state the direction of the resultant force of the train as it follows the curved path. Uh, the direction it is directed towards the center. Directed towards the center, it's okay. So it's fine. I think that is for today. Let's go and have a proper revision of these questions.